I put a lot of effort into this TV. Give me a big thumbs up if this video really did help you out. All right, so first things first, you wanna unplug the power cord, act at your own risk. There is a chance that you can get hurt or even damage the TV. So what you wanna do is unscrew all the screws that hold the plastic bezel to the TV. They're basically clamps all around the TV. Once you do that, then you can, um, that plastic frame that you see in the front of the TV, that becomes loose. Um, next, you wanna switch your screwdriver to a micro Phillips screwdriver and remove the tiny screws that are on all four sides of the TV, the brackets that hold um, the TV together, basically. So once you remove that, then you actually open up the TV to get to the backlight. You want to put all these screws in different cups and label the cups. Um, so for the bezel, you want to label bezel screws. For um, the brackets, you want to label bracket screws, which are the micro Phillips screws. And then you want to make sure you remove all the TV boards as well. And then label those screws TV board screws. So right here, I'm um, flipping over the TV and unclipping the bezel from the TV. Be patient, take your time, it will come all off. And then once you remove the plastic bezel, then you can remove the uh, four metal brackets that um, were held on by the micro Phillips screws. So right here I'm using a suction cup to lift up on the LCD panel to separate it from the TV set. And you want to make sure that you're not like me. You want to wear rubber gloves so you don't get fingerprints everywhere. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I should have done. I should take my own advice. Uh, so right here, I'm unclipping uh, plastic framing using my fingernail. You can use a flathead screwdriver as well. Uh, but if you do get fingerprints, by the way, on that screen, you can just use a microfiber cloth to clean the screen. And if you do get lint on the LCD screen, you can use painter's tape to remove the lint as well. So right here, I'm trying to keep all these screens together. And if you separate them, you're gonna have a really hard time putting it all back together and making sure there's no lint between the screens. So make sure you keep them all together. So right here, I'm using painter's tape to keep the LCD screen to the plastic uh, frame. Basically, it prevents it from flexing as much. If you do flex it and it cracks, this is going to be the most expensive part to replace in your TV. And that's not re really uh, cost effective to replace. So right here, I'm, uh, I forgot to, I just realized I forgot to remove the ribbon cable connections that are on the LCD screen. So now I have to backtrack. And also the pegs that hold that cover, the backlight cover. So now I have to remove the ribbon cable connections and those pegs to get to the LED backlight strips. So learn from my mistakes, people. Yeah. So right here, I'm taking off that metal cover to get to those connections and removing the ribbon cable connections. Easy to do. Just lift up on the latch and slide out the ribbon cables. All right. So right here, these are hardwired to the LCD panel. So you can't remove those and they're easily, you know, you know, damage. You can easily damage them by pulling on them. So make sure you do not pull on them. So right here, I'm unclipping the metal frame and I'm going to use painter's tape to keep it all together. So I don't really tear on these ribbon, you know, ribbon cable connections that are hardwired to the LCD panel. Cause if I damage those, I'm screwed. And that was probably going to cost me $500 to replace that screen. So right here, I'm using a suction cup. Now I'm able to get to all these screens and lift it up as one piece. You want to keep them together. Then I have to remove the pegs that hold down basically the backlight cover. So these pegs are really easy to remove. Just you get some pliers. And when you use the pliers, just squeeze and push right through. And they, they pop right out. And you stir, I think there's like five or six of them all over. 
and my dumbass forgot to remove the TV boards. So yeah, that's why I said earlier, remove the TV boards because there's pegs behind the TV boards you gotta you gotta remove. We got one strip, two, three, four, five, six LED strips that make up the backlight. R2, R1, R2, R1, R2, R1. And if you replace one LED strip, it's recommended that you replace them all. Now, even though this is a Vizio TV, it uses an LG display. Use the display sticker number when ordering. It's located on the back of the TV chassis. The backlight kit consists of 12 LED strips and one board. It's good for LG and Vizio TVs. Make sure your part number matches up with the proper kit. And it's uh, recommended to you update the firmware on your TV to prevent this from happening again. If the kit is sold out, buy individual LED strips. So let's go ahead and test it. So right here, there's a test point. I'll show you where the test points are. You wanna put your black lead on the negative side, the minus symbol, and your red lead goes to the plus symbol and should light up the LED. See? All right, so let's go ahead and test out the backlights. We're gonna test out the first strip right here. And it is good, except for the last LED is not working. And you can see that right down there. And we're reading about 29 volts on the voltmeter. This is how you test one LED strip, putting your test leads right here. If you wanna test both of them, you put your black lead on the negative, the stripe side right here, minus symbol, and then your red lead on the plus symbol and then you should be able to see all the LEDs that are good, they'll light up, and all the bad ones will um, obviously not light up or be extremely dim. So I see two bad LEDs. All right, so we're gonna check the next two, and right here on these, and you can see there's more that are defective as well. So right here, we got one, two LEDs that are bad on this strip alone. And then you follow your way down a little bit down more. This one's turning on and off. And you can see that this one actually has a bad one too. And maybe it's, it could be just how it's soldered in. I don't know, but this one's flickering on and off. And all these lights right here are good actually. This is the only one that's actually working. And let's check the last one. And this one is actually working too. So we got two strips that are actually working. So right here, I got it started with a razor, but I have a plastic gift card in my hand right now. And then just slide it under the LED strips to separate the LED strips from the TV chassis. It just held on by double-sided tape. They come in two pieces. You just once you get to the middle part, you could just unplug it from the R2 section of the LED strip and just slides right out. So right now I'm removing L2 from the TV set. And now I'm getting started removing R2 from the TV set. And so now we're replacing R2 right here with new R2, which is stamped by Shop Jimmy, tested. Now the LED strips do come with double-sided tape on the bottom. So just slide it in and press firmly to stick it onto the TV chassis. So right here, I just removed the last bad LED strip. I'm inserting the good one from shopjimmy.com and now I gotta test it. So I'm testing all the LED strips under a load. They go dim to bright, then it's good. So now I'm putting the cover on and pushing the pegs to lock in the cover. So now that you have the backlight cover locked on with the pegs, you wanna lay down each screen one at a time, making sure there's no lint in between the screens and they insert where that metal tabs are around the border. And we'll make sure that it all lays down evenly flush and flat. Now lastly, you wanna clean the LCD screen, make sure there's no fingerprints and no lint 
I'm going to wipe it down using a microfiber cloth. And when I lay it down, I want to make sure it wraps around the border. And you'll, you'll know that you have it perfectly when it lays down and you see the screw holes. Just like that. So next, I'm going to put the brackets on to lock it in. This is where you need the micro Phillips screws. You want to make sure the LCD is sitting inside the frame, recessed inside the frame. If it's sitting along this edge right here and you put this on and you tighten it down, well, it can crack the LCD. So be careful. All right, so when you put this brace on, you want to match it up with the screw holes right here, here, and here, and here. That's the where it lines up all along those holes. And it clips on right here. So let's go ahead and put the brace on and line it up. And this is where it clips on right here. Just like that. It's kind of scary when you do it, but once you like take it all apart and you start putting it back together, you're like, hey, this is not so bad. This is really not that difficult of a repair. It's just more tedious and you have to be delicate. All right, so right here, when removing the painter's tape, be very careful and go extremely slow because you can tear the ribbon cable connections that are hardwired to the LCD panel and that would cause lines all over your screen. So just take your time and go slow. on make sure when you close the latch it lines up with the black line Or the bottom of the TV. So you're gonna look at the bezel and it says Vizio. You wanna make sure this Vizio is on the same side of the speakers. Now you wanna clamp on the bezel and just screw on the clamps and it'll lock on to the chassis of the TV. Next, install the TV boards. Make sure you have all the ground screws all around the TV boards and all the plugs plugged in. Double check your work also. All right, let's go ahead and turn the TV on. I'm gonna find the buttons on it. I forgot to clip it on. There we go. Alright, so power, and up oh, the TV's on before we didn't get that. We just got a black screen. And then with the flashlight test, then we could see some of the things on the screen after hitting the menu button. Let's hit the menu button and see if we got a screen. And did I hit the menu button? I think I hit the wrong button. I hit input menu. And look, we got a menu on the screen. So it is good. This is a common issue where the LED strips burn out. Now, what I think it really is, I think it's the um, backlight settings are on way too high. So if your backlight setting is on like 100%, you wanna knock it down to 50%. And it should make the LED strips last way longer. 
Lowering the backlight settings will greatly help, but it's highly recommended to update the firmware using a USB stick or uh, internet connection through the TV. If you want an LED TV backlight tester, click on the product link in the video description below. Guys, if you found this video informative and it helped you out, please give me a big thumbs up.